rain once more, the feature of the day, as the Vuelta headed back to Barcelona on stage two. Well, discussions had been long and fraught, and some of the team principals, those who were gunning for overall classification at the end of this race, were in negotiations. Would there be a rider protest? Well, the organizers decided to pull back the finish line to a provisional one with nine kilometers to go, still allowing some bonus seconds on the final climb and indeed heading for home. 16 up for grabs in total. Would anyone be tempted to push on beyond the nine kilometers to go line and indeed try and snatch the lead of the race? Well, with climbing straight out the back door, it had to be a breakaway that went for it. And duly, we had six riders that were up the road. Yet Tabor was a late arrival to the team and his tiredness showed on the first climb. Remco Evanapol had been back to the car to change into some wet weather gear. He went back to the car again to hand it back in. The showers came, the showers went, but rain was again to be at the forefront of everybody's mind. DSM, they were determined to hold on to the leader's jersey, but sadly the day was to prove to be just a little bit too much to the man Lorenzo Milesi, who was in the red jersey. Well, going into the red and out of the race, I'm afraid, there were a few crashes out there. Oscar Onley of DSM was one of those with a suspected collarbone break. In the end, we had three riders remaining up front as the roundabouts that circle the city of Barcelona were taking a toll. Primus Rogic himself found himself on the deck. That meant his team were busy out front negotiating for a hold-up. Andrea Piccolo did not let his tumble extricate him from the breakaway. He fought to get back in. And here it was, Jumbo Visma with Vingago saying, come on guys, let's knock it off. This is all just getting a bit too dangerous. The general agreement was that that was the case. Well, also out there, Matteo Sobrero, he uh, shipped a chain. A few others had a little bit of a worse time, including Geraint Thomas found himself on the deck and with 18 kilometers to go. Lorenzo Milesi said, thanks guys. This red jersey is going to have to belong to somebody else. Well, we passed by the declared finish line, the provisional one. And indeed, two riders were up front, including, of course, Andrea Piccolo, who'd been on the deck. Good news for him. Bad news for everyone who was watching the race that it was essentially neutralised. The favourites decided to call it a day. They would live to fight another day and others were pushing into the gap. That's why Bidar was one of those that dug in, trying to steal a march on everybody and go over the peak first, setting off hot upon his heels. Andy Cron from Lotto Destiny. Well, who would get over the top first was the big question. Sobrero had done a fantastic job of uh, snaffling enough points to make sure he had the king of the mountains, but there was a stage win up for grabs and Cron was determined to wrestle control away from absolutely everybody. He shot off, he's on great form and indeed crossed the line, dedicating his win to Teo de Decker, his fallen teammate. Well, behind, it was a, a battle for minor places, I'm afraid. Take what you can get, and Caden Groves it was that crossed the line next. A new leader in the race, though. Andrea Piccolo did enough to take the red jersey. Cron absolutely delighted not only to win the day, but also take over the points lead as well. So much at stake in this race and indeed with some big climbs still to come. And stage three starting to loom large in everybody's minds. There was lots of shaken heads out there from riders who just wished the day had been a little different. Not Cron though, absolutely delightful. Great win for him. The main favourites crossing the line at ease. They will be in full action on stage three, you can be sure. Well, the general feeling was that the organisers got it absolutely right by pulling back the finish line nine kilometres from the end. They came home one after the other, but Andrea Piccolo is the race leader. EF Education must be delighted after a fabulous team time trial, and now they control the race by a margin of 11 seconds. Being in the breakaway certainly paid off for Piccolo. And for this man, 
king of the mountains. Sobrero doing enough to make sure that the polka dots belong to him. And our stage winner, Kron, of course, leading the points. So what's still to come? Soria to Arenzal, Andorra. And you know that that's in the middle of the Pyrenees. You also know that the weather is unpredictable, as we've seen over the last couple of days. Two Category 1 tests, one of which carrying bonus seconds at the top. That's the penultimate climb. It's going to draw out a huge response from the peloton. Expect a battle royal amongst those gunning for the title.